that's not fair. I love all of my books. I love all of my books. It still has new book smell. Mm. Midnight is the Darkest Hour by, a by Agatha Christie. And this is by Carissa Orlando. Orlando? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Can I make this more awkward if I started to cry? I don't think I showed you guys this one before. I am the luckiest girl alive. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to another installment of Totally Absurd Book Hauls brought to you by Audrey. This is, you guys, it's, it is an embarrassment of riches because there are a lot of gifted books in this pile from you guys and from publishers, which I'm super, super grateful for and jazzed about and overwhelmed by. And I placed so many pre-orders earlier in the year that totally came through in September and October. So we're gonna go through all of those and then a few paths that I went down along the way. So let's just start with the one I'm most jazzed about. That's not fair. That's not fair. I love all of my books. I love all of my books. The one I am currently reading that is my most anticipated book of the year, which is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. All hail Queen Ashley, you guys. You know I love her. You know I have been waiting all year for this book. I've been waiting since last year for this book. And I finally have it and I totally love it. And I will give you guys a full review. So it is her latest and greatest. And this cover is everything. And she is everything. And I'm totally obsessed. And I know you guys are totally tired of hearing me talk about it. But not sorry. Love it. Love her. Love, 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 love. All right. Now let's get into a whole bunch of other stuff most of which I'm embarrassed to say I haven't read, but here we go. Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. This is the UK special edition. So I have read this. I've talked about it in a couple other videos. I fell over when I saw this book online. It's so beautiful. There is a US special edition as well. I am also in my book collecting era right now. So had to have it, had to have it. I don't even want to put it on the floor. What am I going to do? I'm going to topple over this thing over here. Okay, up next, we have Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. So I talked about this book in my most anticipated of September. This is one of my pre-orders. I haven't read it yet, but this is eight episodes, one killer. So in this one, it is a bit of a true crime story. And it says, no one saw the killer, but they all saw the body. So this one is told in mixed media. I am so excited for it. There's maps, there's, oh, like you can follow along. You can armchair detective your way through this book. So we have a murder that happened in 2003 and acclaimed filmmaker was found dead in the garden of their suburban family home. So everyone from the family was at the house that night, but they all swear they saw nothing. And it says, despite a high profile police investigation and endless media attention, no suspect was ever charged and his family, the murdered, the murdered man's family, has been haunted ever since. So now we have 20 years later, which takes us to 2023. The sensational new streaming series, Infamous, is dedicated to investigating and perhaps cracking this famous cold case. So it says all the key players will be reunited on camera and the truth will come out. Are you ready to see it? So we've got transcripts, we've got autopsy photos in here, like drawings, not not like graphic autopsy photos, but I'm really excited. I've heard such great things about this book already and I'm just really jazzed. There's like fake newspaper reports and stuff in here. I love, just inventive. I love, love, love the entire concept of this book. So stay tuned. And then I went on a little bit of a Lisa Jewell. I think it's just these three, Journey. So if you guys have been following me, you know that I am on a mission to read her to zero over like the next few years. I'm not like trying to do it anytime soon, but I of course would like to accumulate her books that I am missing. <laughs> so that when the mood strikes, I've got it. So I own all of her thriller books, but I was missing out on some of her backlist. So I picked up Vince and Joy, and this says one missed chance, two people changed for all time. This is set in July, 1986. Vince and Joy have their whole lives ahead of them on the day they meet. Two weeks later, they must part, each having lost a piece of their heart to the other. They won't see one another for seven years. Where will they be then? And in the years that follow, what will become of Vince and Joy? So I read an interview with Lisa Jewell talking about like her favorite books of her own that she's written. 
And this is, she says, kind of her fav favorite of like the romance genre that she wrote. So of course, I've got to pick it up because it's one of her favorites and I want to read it. So this one came out in 2005, it looks like originally. So one of her earlier books. And then I also picked up I did a lot of pango shopping here, you guys. I picked up The Truth About Melody Brown. So this I got from Blackwell's UK cover. This I got from Pango. And this one we have, Melody can remember nothing before her ninth birthday. Now she's in her early 30s. She lives in the middle of London with her 17-year-old son. She hasn't seen her parents since she left home at 15, but Melody doesn't mind. She feels better off on her own. But when fragments of her past reemerge, she slowly begins to piece together the real story of her childhood. With every mystery she solves, another one materializes. With every question she answers, another appears. And Melody begins to wonder if she'll ever know the truth about her past. So I think this is when we're starting to get into more of her thrillery era. So let me see. Vincent Joy was the fourth book that she wrote. And this one was much further up the line. <laughs> has like a huge list of all of her books here so I'm excited for this one and what's fun yeah this came out in 2009 so this is the truth about Melody Brown and then I also picked up the truth about Lisa Jewell so this is a non-fiction book and I mentioned this in I think it was part one of what I read in September so when I read The Family Remains which is the sequel to The Family Upstairs I was listening to an interview with her on YouTube and she talked about how a journalist was following her during the course of that year, kind of documenting her writing that book. So this happened during the panorama. So it, a lot of it was like over Zoom. He wasn't actually like in the house with her. But this is a year in the life of best selling, best selling novelist Lisa Jewell. And I am so intrigued and it follows the journey of her writing that book, which I just finished. So I'm also excited about that. So she was sending him, so this is written by Will Booker, Will Brooker, excuse me, Will Brooker. She was sending him parts of her book. So he was reading it as she was writing it as well. And I'm just really excited to hear about her writing process and just sort of her past. And it's got everything from, it says like revisions, origin stories, sequels, no plan, hearing voices, it's got in between days, pub day, author meet editor, and just sort of the entire journey that she goes through. So I think it's just gonna be very interesting. I'm fascinated by it. I love the play on titles that he did here. And I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. So it says a must have for fans of Lisa Jewell, for aspiring authors who are interested in the path to success and a testament to the way books can bring us together. So it just sounds fun and I, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, what's next? What's next? What's next? All right. Let's pivot here to another pre-order I had. So this is The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. This is a novella. She's small. And this came out first in the UK. I want to say it comes out end of October in the US. This is the UK edition. I just really like the cover. And this is Tis the Season to Be Wary. So you can see there's like some blood on the snow here on the bottom. And this is about a girl, Ashley Smith. So she is a bright eyed but lonely American studying in London. And she's invited to spend Christmas with her classmates family at their Cotswolds Manor. Seems perfect. <laughs> it's a Peter Swanson book. So you know it's not gonna be perfect. So something strange about the house, both stately and run down. What could the motives of the mysterious Chapman family be? And what holiday horrors might be lying in wait? So I'm excited for this little this little ditty of a book and I'm saving this for December because I do want to read this when we get into sort of, sort of snowy season but I'm also working on a read to zero for Peter Swanson including this I have three books to read so he's going to be a quicker zero ah I almost dropped his book but I'm excited for that was very very eager to get it and then the next book I have is Rouge by Mona Awad. And this was sent to me by Simon & Schuster. So she wrote, I feel like she's very famous for writing Bunny, which I haven't read yet. And I heard about this book and I was really, really intrigued about it. And I'm very grateful that they sent it to me. And this is kind of a deep dive into beauty and like the beauty industry and the myths perpetrated by, perpetrated by the beauty industry. 
but it is also a gothic fairy tale and it says about a lonely dress shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is more than skin deep so there's definitely kind of i think like some culty spa vibes to this which i totally love and it says Belle discovers the frightening secret behind her and her mother's obsession with the mirror and the great shimmering depths and demons that lurk on the other side of the glass. So it's pitched as Snow White means, meets Eyes Wide Shut and the surreal descent into the dark side of beauty, envy, grief, and the complicated love between mothers and daughters. So dark humor, kind of horror-ish, like I said, gothic fairy tale also seems perfect for this time of year. So very excited about it. Very cool cover as well. I don't want to drop anything, so I'm going to lean. All right, I'm going to wait till I find another one of that. Ugh, this is one that was gifted from you guys. So this is the Taken Ones by Jess Lowry, and not like collectively you guys, but <laughs> this was sent to me by Jackie. So Jackie, thank you so much. And the funniest thing about this is I was having a conversation with Amber from Books and Beaches, and we were talking about Jess Lowry has a YA. I don't think that it's like science fiction necessarily. I don't know if it's like a little dystopian coming out in February. Point being, I saw the reveal on Jess Lowry's Instagram and it is like this stunning cover and it has red painted edges. And we were doing the should I, shouldn't I? Do I buy it? Do I not? I don't know. I don't know. I really want it. She's beautiful. And Amber was like, I have her latest book, like I should read that one first. And I was like, oof, I haven't picked it up yet, but like ditto. And no joke, that day, Jackie, this showed up. I feel like talk about putting something out into the universe and having it boomerang back to you. It was so weird. I was so weirded out when I opened up the package. I was like, oh my God, we literally were just talking about this. So this one is set in the summer of 1980 and summer of 2022. So I love me some 80s, you guys know it. So in this one, it said, despite the local superstition that the Bendy Man haunts the woods, three girls go into a Minnesota forest and only one comes out. One of my favorite tropes, one of my favorite tropes. Dead silent, memory gone, no trace of her friends. The mystery of the Taken Ones captures the nation. So then we have our summer of 2022 and a cold case detective Van Reed and forensic scientist Harry Steinbeck are assigned a disturbing homicide. A woman buried alive, clutching a heart charm necklace belonging to one of the vanished girls. Van follows her gut. Harry trusts in facts. Their common ground is the need to catch a killer before he kills again. They have something else in common. Each has ties to the original case in ways they're reluctant to share. I'm so excited. This is also totally perfect for this time of year. And this is the first in a series. So I'm excited. I, you guys know I love a detective series. This is definitely giving me a little bit of Tana French in the Woods vibes, which I love that book so much. So I'm very excited for this. And Jeffrey Deaver says it's a one sip reading. So stay tuned. All bets are off after Ashley Winstead of what's coming next. So wait for it. And then the next book I have was also a gifted one. This is from Berkeley. This is The September House, and this is by Carissa Orlando. Orlando? <laughs> oh my gosh. Carissa Orlando. Why can't I say that word? Orlando. Like Florida. So I talked about this in my most anticipated, and I also talked about this on my Instagram if you guys follow me there. And this is the one where the, the walls in the house bleed. This is perfect for spooky season two. You guys, there need to be more than 31 days in October. I'm just putting that out there now. Can I manifest that to happen too? So this one is a woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it becomes a haunted nightmare. So this is definitely horror. Margaret's husband and her are living in this house and eventually he can't take it anymore because every September this house comes alive. Like literally the walls bleed. So it's four years after they've moved in. Her husband disappears, their daughter comes home to help, and I, I don't, I don't need to know anything else. Bloody walls, missing husband, haunted house, set in September. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, another one of my pre-orders. This is Alice Feeney. This is Good Bad Girl. I haven't read this one yet. And I'm a huge Alice Feeney fan. So it says, when bad things happen to good people, sometimes good people have to do bad things. So I don't really want to know much else about this one. Do you guys want to know? I know that this was like a complicated one for me to try and describe, but we have 
20 years after a baby is stolen from a stroller, a woman is killed. The two crimes are somehow linked and spark a mystery with three suspects, two murders, and one victim. So there you go. So I have read all of her books except, I always forget the name of the one I haven't read. I have it, I just haven't read it yet. I haven't read I Know Who You Are, which is her second book. So His and Hers is still my favorite of all of her books, but I do very much enjoy her dark and twistiness and she definitely doesn't hold back on being dark and messed up, which I love. Okay, next up is a gifted arc. I low-key begged for this one and was very excited. Flatiron Books sent this to me. This is The Professor by Lauren Nossett. This is the sequel to The Resemblance. This comes out in November, so I'll put the exact date down below for you guys. I loved The Resemblance, and when I heard she had a second book out, I definitely was like, ooh, I really want to get my hands on this one. So I asked, and they sent it to me, which I'm super grateful for. So in this one, our detective Marlet Kaplan was our main character in the first book, and she is back again because it's a series. So in this one we are back in Athens, Georgia and it says Ethan Haddock is discovered in his apartment dead apparently by his own hand. His fatality immediately garners media attention not because his death reflects the troubling increase of depression and mental health issues among college students but because the media has caught the whiff of a scandal. His professor Dr. Verena Sobeck has been taken in for questioning and there are rumors his death is a result of a bad romance. The Title IX investigation is opened, the professor is suspended, and social media crusaders and trolls alike are out for blood. So we get some investigation happening into what happened here, and we'll find out. But the first book was so fantastic. That one had a deep dive into definitely the darker side of Greek life, obviously police investigation. For me... I thought the professor took, the, this is the professor, I thought the resemblance took a very bold turn and did something that I totally didn't expect in it and don't expect, I, I just, I, I can't, I can't, I can't talk about it. I thought, I thought it made some very bold choices that I very much enjoyed and Marlet to me reminds me of Cassie a little bit from Dublin Murder Squad. I'm a huge Dublin Murder Squad fan, as you guys know. I got to keep on that train too, but I really thought she did a fantastic job. Resemblance was her debut, so definitely check that one out. All right, now, in my journey, actually, let's start Academia, this one too. I've already talked about this one because I've read it. This is This is How We End Things by R.J. Jacobs. This is some psychology grad students who are under the leadership of a professor. They are doing the psychology study on deception, and they are running an experiment which goes quite wrong, and by the end of the night, someone in their group is found murdered. So we get police investigation. They're in North Carolina. We get a snowstorm that comes. It's spring break, so campus is empty. People are snowed in, isolated. Killer is out there with some police investigation. So very good time. If you want to hear more about it, so listen to my September part two wrap up or check me out on Instagram. <laughs> cross, cross promote myself here. <laughs> No shame in my game. No shame. Okay. A little bit of shame to the next one. If you guys watched me rave and rave and rave about Bright Young Women, then you would know that I'm absolutely obsessed with Jessica Knoll. You might also know, and if you didn't, I'm going to tell you now, I have a little bit of a complicated relationship with Jessica Knoll because I read Luckiest Girl Alive when it first came out. And I had a very complicated relationship with that book. So I really enjoyed a lot of it. I really enjoyed Ani as a character. I was very shocked with how dark it went. And I feel like this is when I was really getting into darker books. So anyway, I wound up unhauling Luckiest Girl Alive. And after I read Bright Young Women, I was like, you know what I need to do? I need to go back and read both of Jessica Knoll's previous books and see have my feelings changed? Or maybe it's just a book that I'm gonna have a complicated relationship with and that's totally fine. But I wanna go back and find out because I am still obsessing over Bright Young Women and it's officially been like six weeks since I've read that book now. I can't stop thinking about it. I, I'm not exaggerating when I say several times a week that book crosses my mind. I also have obsessively been like listening to interviews with her because I find her writing journey and her process and her ambition just so 
fascinating and inspiring and just tremendous. So anyway, I did a thing. I went on Pango, <laughs> then I did some thrifted book shopping. So I repurchased Luckiest Girl Alive. And when I tell you I am such a diva, this is, this one came from Pango. So thank you, my Pango friend who sent this to me. We're not actually friends, I bought it. I did not want the subsequent versions that had like now a Netflix show or like New York Times bestseller, which congratulations for her, she's a New York Times bestseller. So this is the original, original. I had a hard time unhauling this because it was such a beautiful cover. I don't think I have ever, no. This is probably the third time I have repurchased a book that I have unhauled thinking I never wanted to read it again and then read it. I repurchased an Ethan Hawke book and I repurchased Ralph's Party by Lisa Jewell. I still can't believe I unhauled that original one, but sometimes bad choices are made. So I repurchased Luckiest Girl Alive and I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna get Netflix back and I'm gonna watch the show. And then I got The Favorite Sister. So I wound up getting this from Better World Books. This is the UK cover. I really wanted the hardcover of it. And again, was being such a diva. I didn't want a paperback and I didn't want one that didn't look like it was in great condition. So this one is actually in fantastic condition and considering it came from the UK, I'm impressed. Better World Books UK. It was a former library book. So it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a situation going on in the back, but it's okay. It's totally okay. So stay tuned for some sort of Jessica Knoll inspired video that I haven't quite figured out yet, but she's happening. Okay, next up is my special edition of Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I got this from Blackwell's as well. This has these stunning edges. Again, I don't mean to keep being this girl, but I did a reel on Instagram with this. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I love this book so much. So I definitely want to give this a reread. It hasn't even been like, you can tell I haven't even like actually opened it. It still has new book smell. Mm. So it's black on the top and then it's got this red and black on the side. It's so good, you guys. I love this series. So I read this when it first came out in the US. That's how I discovered it. This is obviously the UK edition. So the only differences are the locations. This is obviously set in the UK. The US one is set in Connecticut. So when I do the reread, I wanna actually physically reread this one. Not because anything is different in the plot, but the other two ones that I have are the UK edition. So anyway, I got this. Again, I'm in my book collecting era. I need to get a book collecting shelf going. And then the next book I have was gifted to me. So this is Mother Daughter Murder Night by Nina Simon. So during the book two besties retreat this summer, August, they had multiple raffles and I won this book box raffle. So it was a subscription box. I got to pick like what, which one I wanted. So I did Sleuth because of course I did. And this is the fabled book box. So thank you to Krista and Amanda and Sarah and Lindsay for hosting the retreat and for the wheel of prizes, getting this prize my way. So it was just the luck of the draw, obviously. But this is what I'm super excited about. So this is sort of like Gilmore Girls with Murder is how it's pitched. So you have grandma, daughter and granddaughter. And it says nothing brings family together like a murder next door. So I don't know if this is like cozy cozy or if it does go dark, but stay tuned. I will of course let you guys know, but I was so flippin' excited when I opened up the box and saw this because I, again, in like a weird cosmic karma kind of a way, I was gonna buy this when it first came out and I was stocking it on Amazon, but I was out of town and I didn't want to order it and have it show up because typically, although not lately, typically Amazon will show up the next day or maybe the day after. And I didn't want a package sitting around when I wasn't home. So I was like, oh, I'll just do it when I get home. And when I got home, I had a package waiting for me and it was this. Synchronicity, you guys, the world is weird. It's weird and I'm not mad about it. Not mad about it, okay. Next up is another gifted book from publisher. So this is Such a Pretty Face by Christy Demeester. This is from St. Martin's. This is the paperback release of this book. So the hardcover came out last year. I talked about this in the vlog I just did recently. And this is set in 2019, I was in 2004. I was gonna say 2004. Who am I, 2004. 
So we have, this is horror, and it says he's known as the Kerr and he leaves no trace, except for the victims he viciously slays every 15 years. Young women who refuse to conform and don't know when to shut up. So we have a mother and daughter duo and past and present demons, and they must chase the source of this unrelenting power to its core, either to obliterate it or lose themselves forever. So this is like a gorgeous cover that doesn't scream horror, but the book screams horror. So excited to find out. And then another book that was gifted to me, this was gifted to me from Heather. And I'm so sorry, Heather, it took me so long to thank you properly. This is The Coworker by Frieda McFadden. So I opened this while I was filming my vlog. If you guys haven't seen it, it went up a few weeks back. And I was like, oh my God, Heather, this is so amazing. This is so cool. And like in my head, I thanked you for it as if we were having a live conversation. And then like a week later, I was like, oh my God, I never actually properly thanked her. So so sorry again heather thank you again so much heather i'm gonna keep saying heather but i'm really excited for this so i read the housemaid which i totally loved and this is two women an office filled with secrets and one terrible crime that can't be taken back mm. i love office drama it is the only thing i miss about going into a workplace is the drama and the gossip i was talking to my boss about this this week and it was just like, if we were in the office, like, should we got Like, we're just like, the gossip is so much different. And I was like, if we were in the office, you'd get more gossip because you would naturally run into people. When you work remotely and everyone's got to like hit you up on Teams to talk, it's like a lot less spontaneous than if you just cross paths going to get a cup of coffee. So anyway, I'm excited to see what happens when uh, these people cross paths because we've got a high heeled shoe and blood sprayed across the elevator door. So up my alley. Okay, another gifted book i told you this guy i told you this guys i told you this guys this month plus is an embarrassment of riches and i'm so grateful for it so this is from gallery books this is becoming the boogeyman by richard chismar so this is the sequel to chasing the boogeyman which i have and i started to read so i'm going to finish chasing the boogeyman so then i can read the sequel to it so this is sort of a strange twist on a true crime. And I talked about this in my most anticipated books of October. So Richard Chismar himself is the self insert into this book and it's what he was actually doing. So the first book is 1988 and the true crime aspect is this completely fake crime that he's made up in his hometown about the serial killer. And the true part is the Richard Chismar insert with like his friends in the town he actually lived in and he moved back in with his parents right after college while his girlfriend slash future wife was finishing her fifth year of school. So I'm really excited about it. And it has like all these photographs in it. And these are all things that he took. And when the first book came out, it was definitely like, is this real? Are these real crimes? So there's like fake, like true crime aspects of this fake, like shots of crime scenes and things like that. So these are all things that like him and his kids in real life did to make the book. Very inventive, kind of much like the Kara Hunter book, just a really inventive twist on a book and I'm excited for it. So again, more blood on the cover. I feel like that should have been a prompt for book to rip bingo blood on the cover. And yeah, we'll see where that takes us. Okay, two more, not pre-orders. So these were just roads, these were just roads I went down. So the first one is I Did It For You by Amy Engel. So I talked about this in the vlog I did also. This is a murdered girl, a convicted killer, and is justice served. So what really happened the night her sister was murdered? It's been 14 years since Greer's sister Eliza and her boyfriend were murdered. The killer confessed and was executed, but Greer's family has never been the same, nor has their small town. Now another teenage couple has been murdered, a copycat, according to authorities, but Greer can't shake the feeling there's more to the story. If she's to find answers to the questions that have haunted her for over a decade, Greer is going to have to face up to some difficult truths about herself and her family. I'm very excited for this. So I heard about this through Gare and Kate from the Kill Spilling the Tea, Killing the Tea killing the tea podcast and i'm excited for it so i haven't read anything by amy engel i got this this is the uk cover i just thought this cover was absolutely stunning so i picked up this one from blackwells picked it up by which i mean i ordered it online and then the next book i have is penance by eliza clark so i came across this i want to say like from crime reads 
I am subscribed to so many bookish writing different newsletters. This came out in the UK first and just recently came out in the US. So this is another Slender Man-ish inspiration. And I am probably like unnecessarily fascinated by that. I didn't know anything about it until I read Mr. Tender's Girl by Carter Wilson last year. And then Lindsay, actually from Lindsay's Little Library, told me about The Slender Man because that actually happened in Wisconsin and Lindsay's from Wisconsin. And after I read that book, I wound up finding this fantastic documentary on HBO Max. I guess it's just Max now about The Slender Man. And it, the true story is like these two teenage girls stab their friend and leave her for dead because they were convinced that like this mythical creature, the Slender Man, like told them to do it basically. And it's a really disturbing documentary in that it's, there's clearly issues with the two girls who did this and their belief in this. And you can see the police interviews, you can see the court case and it's, it's so sad and it's so tragic. And there's interviews with their parents and just their, their, deep rooted belief that they were doing the right thing by harming their friend. Like it's really messed up. It's really, really messed up. So in this one, it says nearly a decade after the horrifying murder of 16 year old Joan Wilson in a seaside town, journalist Alex Z. Corelli has written the definitive account of the crime. A dizzying feat of investigative mastery, Corelli's book is built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members, painstaking historical research, and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves. The result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The only question is how much of this story is true. So this is fiction, but it's written as if it's nonfiction. And it is like this book is an examination of the 2016 murder of teenager Joan Wilson by three girls attending the same high school, written by journalist Alex Z. Corelli. So I'm very intrigued by this. And again, I feel like the Chismar book and the Kara Hunter book, sort of these very interesting twists on true crime and how these books are written. So I'm just really intrigued by this one and I'm excited to, to give it a go. And I haven't read anything by Eliza Clark before, but I've just heard really great things about this book. I wanted to get my hands on it. Obviously, that's why one buys a book. And then three more to go. So let me go through one last gifted book, which again, you guys, ridiculous, ridiculously lucky. Also from Berkeley, this is Blood Sisters by Vanessa Lilly. This will be out on Halloween. This is an, investiga an investigative, you guys, this is an archeologist. For the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Sid Walker is investigating missing women and murdered women in Oklahoma. So she is from Oklahoma. She escaped from there 15 years ago and swore she would never go back. But when a skull is found near the crime scene of her youth, just as her sister Emma Lou vanishes, Sid knows she must return. So she refuses to let her sister's disappearance or the remains go ignored, as so often happens in cases of missing Native women but not everyone is glad to have Sid come home. So we get the reluctant return home, which I totally love. And it says the deeper she digs, the more she uncovers about a string of missing indigenous women cases going back decades to save her sister. She must, she must expose a darkness in the town that no one wants to face. The truth will be unearthed. So I've heard such great pre buzz for this book. I, when I did my October most anticipated, I had just gotten the e-arc of this. And then like a week later, this showed up in the mail, which I'm, ridiculously grateful for. So Vanessa Lilly herself is an enrolled citizen of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. Her main character in this book is like, I was gonna say set in Rhode Island, lives in Rhode Island, which is where Vanessa Lilly lives now. So there's so much personal touch to this book and so much personal passion to this book. And I've heard it's just like bingeable from start to finish and I'm really excited for it. She is someone I follow, her writing advice. She does so many just amazing events to promote other authors. She's such a supporter of other authors. And I just think she's fantastic. Young Rich Widows was absolutely fantastic as well. So excited for that. And then the last two books I got, this was like a very deep dive investigative, all the places, all the searching. And I did it. So I have some obsession with certain authors. And some authors first books are harder to get your hands on than others. But you guys, I finally did it. 
So the first book I have is Mae Cobb's first book called Big Woods. So this is out of publication now. This was with a different publisher than her newer books like The Hunting Wives. And I just really, really wanted to read this because this is her first book and she's talked about it in so many interviews before. So you can get, I want to say you can get the audiobook on Amazon, but I didn't want the audiobook. So luckily for me, <laughs> you can build a wish list on thrift books and better world books and click the little buttons and when it comes in stock they let you know so i snagged this one and it is when her sister disappears the only clue leah has is a cryptic message underground by the woods so we are in 1989 in the sleepy town of longview texas where 10 year old lucy disappears her parents the police and the community all brace for the worst assuming her body will soon be found in big woods just like the other unsolved kidnappings but then Lucy's 14 year old sister, Leah, starts having dreams about Lucy, dreams that reveal startling clues as to what happened. And Leah begins her own investigation and soon she meets a reclusive widow who may hold the key to finding Lucy, if only she can find the courage to come forward. So, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It sounds really going. So it says, don't go into the big woods. And then the last book I have to talk to you guys about is The Girl in Keller's Way by Megan Golden. I finally pulled the trigger on this. I just, I just wanted to have it. I wanted to read her first book. I've read all of her other books. I'm a huge fan of hers and I just wanted to see where it all began. So this is, most murders are committed by someone known to the victim. More often than not, it's an immediate relative, a husband or a wife. When a body is found buried near the desolate forest road of Keller's Way, Detective Mel Carter must identify the victim if she is to have any chance of finding the killer. That's no easy task with fragmentary evidence from a crime committed years earlier and a conspiracy of silence from anyone who might have information. The one person who may be able to help is Julie West. Julie often jogs along Keller's Way to clear her mind and to escape the confines of her suffocating suburban life until one day something happens there that shakes Julie to the core, making her question everything she ever believed about her life, her marriage, and even her sanity. So it says, new Australian author of domestic noir. Who do you trust when you can't trust yourself? I'm really excited for this. So I, for the longest time, thought The Escape Room was her first book, which I loved. And I feel like The Escape Room and The Night Swim are my favorite of Megan Golden's books. And I really am interested to see where the darkness all began. So I do have an idea for a video for some of these books, but like I said, we'll see what happens. So anyway, that was a ton. That was ridiculous. I am, I am the luckiest girl alive. <laughs> But seriously, you guys, thank you so much for everyone who gifted a book to me, for the publishers who sent me books. I am so just like awkwardly grateful and stunned and just beside myself. I have never wanted to do anything other than be in a world of books in some shape or form, whether it's reading them or writing them or reviewing them or talking about them. Like this is just a thousand percent my passion and to have this platform and to have these amazing people in my life and to have this access to publishers and this kind of like connection with people just really like warms my heart so much. I can't even tell you how grateful I am for again, just sort of the, the complete, gift that all of this is and has been so i'm like choking up because i'm my mouth is really dry i swear i'm not gonna start crying <laughs> can i make this more awkward if i started to cry i'm not gonna cry there's, there's no crying in book loving there's totally crying in book loving but anyway okay so in all seriousness you guys thank you so much for being here thank you so much for the gifted books thank you so much for talking to me about books for recommending books to me putting them on my radar and for telling me quite possibly the kindest thing anyone could ever say to me is that they picked up a book that I recommended and they loved it and they thanked me for doing it and all I want to do is talk about books that I love and get them in the hands of people that I love and just rave and share and just have a community so thank you guys so much thank you for watching this video for watching all of them for being here for being in my world and i will see you guys in another video very soon so take care guys bye